Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. Today I want to show you guys some ways that are very interesting for us to activate particles and then, um, you know, create these really beautiful effects that you can see on many places where you see the particles coming to life, changing color and moving in beautiful creative ways. Um, just like you saw on the you know, on the reference image of what we're gonna be creating today. So without further ado, let's check out what we're gonna do. First thing, we're gonna drop down a grid. Come inside and let's pull out a little bit. And what we're gonna do is we wanna have some thickness on the grid. So we're gonna drop down an ex ex poly extrude node. And we're just basically building our split left to right new parameters and let me just get rid of this and I'm just gonna extrude this a little bit and close the back of it then I'm gonna do points from volume so that I can fill this up with particles and let's do 0 0.01 in the amount of particles and just randomize them that might be a lot of points let's do 0 0.02 and just randomize the jittering then I'm going to drop down in all. And this is basically my source. So I'm going to, I want to, I want to create some sort of like guide. So, because in this tutorial, like I want to show you guys how you can create this, like in a very controllable way. So for example, if the client has the logo right here and you want the particles to be coming to life from here to there, we're just gonna do a, a straight line for the sake of explaining how it's done. So this effect is created using like, we're gonna create it using a line. Drop down a transform and let's position this line at the beginning of the the particle source let's increase the length and we're going to animate the growth if you hit control and hit the length for say 120 frames I did it backwards, so I'm gonna just hit shift on my keyboard, select this, and invert the keyframes. So there we go, we've got a basic growth. And now I'm gonna add a mountain. The mountain's not gonna work because we don't have any normals. So let's put it here, and I'm actually going to do this in a different way sorry about that guys let's just extend this position and then after the position I'm gonna drop my mountain I'm gonna need more points see for example 200 something like that Yeah, that seems to be okay. And then I'm gonna do an attribute transfer just to double check how this color transfers onto the points. So that's working fine. What we're gonna do is drop down a carve and we are going to carve it on the opposite direction. So we'll start from say something like this and go all the way up and here we'll create our animation. And we want the spread to be larger because these are the particles that we're gonna be activating. So we'll be spreading it out like that. Something along these lines. Of 
cool. So this right here is just for visualization. We will be using this other part here. And so let's just go ahead and copy it for now. And then here, this is our source. So we're gonna do a pop popnet and connect this here. So these are gonna be our initial points, right? So it's coming here and let's say we want all points and birth dollar f is equal to one that way we're only emitting particles in the first frame but since there is like no force doesn't look like anything is happening i'm gonna make the guides invisible and just add a ton of turbulence here so that we can see um you know that everything's working completely fine so we know that the particles are only being emitted on the first frame and we know that um, everything's working fine for now okay so what we're gonna do is drop down a sub solver and connect this to the right input of your merge node inside of our sub solver we are going to create an attribute transfer and we're gonna come out here we're going to copy what we created here and we are going to paste it inside. But we want it to transfer color as well. So we're going to make this black and we're going to make this red. Let's see. So the, the infection I want to infect the CD and they and this number here and the distance is really high so I'm gonna tone it down so that's working there but we want it to be like wider and a little bit more blurred out so let's see what we get here you know and that might be too much I mean it really depends on on what you're going for uh, I'm gonna reduce it a little bit, something like that. And let's see what we have. So yeah, that seems to be working quite nice. And if you can recall, we have depth here. So you could actually pull, I'll sketch it out for you guys. So. We have depth here and you can increase the depth more so that the infection of the red only covers particles on the top and the ones below are not activated just yet. So very powerful techniques here. Now we're going to drop down a pop force, pop wind actually, because they're going to be, it's nicer to treat them as wind. And let's just use a vector expression and say, if we come here, the air resist is a parameter called air resist. So we're just gonna type in, um, in it can't be caps locks. It has to be like, um, just like we're typing it here. So air resist is multiplied or is equal to at CD dot R. And then we want the velocity to be on the Y axis. So let's see what this does. So as you can see, the particles that are getting turned red are immediately being pulled upwards. Um, let's see. We could add a pop force as well so that we can get a little bit of variation in there. Give me a sec. I'm thinking actually maybe
we do error assist is equal to fit01 rand at ptnum between point 0.1 and 2 multiply by at cd.r let's see what this gives us So, give me a sec guys, I'm just going to reduce the amount of particles a little bit and then I'll explain what I was doing there. Because I want to tweak two, two things outside of POPs. I'm just going to make this a little smaller so that it's faster to calculate. We're going to increase this to 0 0.03 so it's even faster. And then let me have a look at our line here. We're going to add some noise on the Y so that some of the particles are infected like up. So upwards. So we add a noise here. That's basically what I want. And I want to reduce this a little bit. And um, let's push this up a little bit here. And let's test this out. So inside here, just gonna remove this part. So it's already way faster. And what I'm doing here with the pop wind is that I'm saying uh, fit the air resist between a random point number between a point one and a two, but only when it's red. That's basically what I'm saying. So let's do that between like a zero and a five so that the, the gap is wider. Um, so now we have variation on the height of the thing and also like on the just much more randomized um, velocities on the points. You can already see that they are randomized based on the point number. So, so, so much more random, but I want those to be almost like pockets. So let's see what we can do about that. We're gonna do an attribute VOP and inside here, we're gonna add a turbulence, connect the position and the the turbulence onto the noise and right click and say create input parameters so that we can control this outside and this is going to give us this pockets here and what i want to do is bind export this as like mask so let's call this attribute a mask and we're going to go into into the pop net and instead of randomized uh, PT num. let's see what happens if we randomize it based on the mask that we just created there. Let's see. It's not as random as I was hoping for. Add PT num. So Let's do, let's do the following. PTNOM right here. And then let's add a pop drag. And we'll do air resist is equal to fit zero one. We're, we'll do the same thing, but it's ran that PTNOM between zero and 10 but this time we'll multiply it by mask and let's see what we get I'm 
I mean, we're getting the activation and we have the variation in there and you can see it here, for example, where like we start to get some points that go up more than others based on the pockets that we have, but it's clearly not like strong enough because we're gonna need to increase the amplitude here to just make it really visible. I want to change the pop color. Actually, I thought that was going to be easier to see, but let's just remove that. So now we should be able to see it much clearer. You can see those pockets there that just really help give us that variation that we're looking for. And if we wanted to make his feel like it's kind of trailing, let's add a little bit of velocity here as well. The, the wrong way, so this is gonna be negative 0.5. Let's see what this gives us. So yeah, that's kind of looking pretty cool. Now what I want to try to do is, you know, fine tune this a little more by um, adding some noise to it so that like this thing becomes a little bit more variant. But that is something that I'm going to cover on the second part of this tutorial because we're already going overboard in time. But I'm going to just show you guys how cool this looks from the top. Let me see if I can find a nice angle for this. Let's make the points a little bit bigger. And see how cool that is. Like this is the kind of effect that you can do like animating really cool and very controllable ways over so many things and, and this we can fade out with the um, the attribute transfer inside here inside our sub solver to tweak it and make it even more detailed all right guys so i'll be back on the part two of this tutorial and i hope you guys are enjoying it so far